You can't invent villains like this. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie portrayals of real-life bad guys. You will die, Yankee bastard man. Number 10, Ray Liotta as Henry Hill, Goodfellas. You're a funny guy. <laughs> what do you mean? You mean the way I talk? Even next to a dazzling Joe Pesci performance, Leota shines in the role of real-life gangster Henry Hill. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Though Martin Scorsese prevented Leota from meeting Hill until filming was complete, the actor studied recordings of the gangster, helping him nail his character. <laughs> Narrating his story for us, Leota as the Irish-Italian gangster helps us understand the mob world and what a man like Hill will do to survive. It doesn't matter, because whether he goes to jail or whether he stays on the street and he beats the case, he's a dead man. He knows it and you know it. Number 9. Matt Stone as Saddam Hussein, South Park, Bigger, Longer and Uncut. Some people say that I'm a bad guy. He was once the most dangerous man in the world, but you wouldn't know it based on this depiction. Ah, that's not tough. Let's get busy. Cartoons can get away with more, and South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker use this to their advantage when lampooning Saddam and his lover, Satan. Is sex the only thing that matters to you? I love you. Though it's definitely not the most realistic, this portrayal of the Iraqi dictator is as memorable as they come. Now, everyone bow down to me. Saddam, I am the dark ruler, not you. Relax, bitch, you better see now, hey. <laughs> Number eight, Gary Oldman as Lee Harvey Oswald, JFK. Did you shoot the president? I didn't shoot anybody, no, sir. I'm just a patsy. Chances are, if you weren't alive when President Kennedy was assassinated, the picture you have in your mind of Lee Harvey Oswald is actually of Gary Oldman. You know this man? Is he an employee? Yes, he is. The president's been shot. Though the two look remarkably similar, there's more to this portrayal than simply appearance. Oldman acted as a detective for his research into the role, which helped him embody in an almost eerie manner the man accused of killing the president. Lee Harvey Oswald is brought out like a sacrificial lamb and nicely disposed of as an enemy of the people. Oswald! Number seven, Johnny Depp as John Dillinger, Public Enemies. John Dillinger, Rob Banks. While many movie gangsters are simply impersonation of other movie gangsters, this Depp performance is a cut above. Portraying the infamous Depression-era bank robber, he slaps on his best sardonic smile and acts with meticulousness, restraint, and boldness in the face of the police and the FBI. What keeps you up nights, Mr. Dillinger? Coffee. Cool as ice and not afraid to get his hands dirty, Depp's Dillinger is cold, calculating, and real. We're having too good a time today. We ain't thinking about tomorrow. Number six, Brad Pitt as Jesse James, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. I'll creep up behind that cashier, and I'll cock his head back like so. While critics agreed this film missed its mark, they were practically unanimous in their praise of Brad Pitt and his Oscar-nominated co-star Casey Affleck. <laughs> While the relationship between the two Wild West figures is what moves the plot along, Pitt deftly personifies the legend that is the outlaw Jesse James. It's perfect casting, as he's able to shift from murderer to loving father to crazy son of a bitch seamlessly. I give them names. Such as? Such as enemies. <sighs> Number five, Denzel Washington as Frank Lucas, American Gangster. This was me, Richie, right here. This was all me. This is one performance that proves gangsters can be cruel and callous as well as suave and smooth. New York drug lord and crime boss Frank Lucas is known for his style and flair, and his confidence shines through in every scene thanks to Washington's stellar portrayal. You gonna shoot me in front of everybody? Huh? Come on. Though the actor tries his hardest not to glamorize the seedy drug world, it's hard not to fall for Lucas's charms. My man. <laughs> so brother, huh? <laughs> so brother. <laughs> Number four, Eric Bana as Mark Chopper Reed, Chopper. How would you describe yourself now? Just a bloke. Just a good bloke down on his luck. Before becoming an improbable star thanks to a run of semi-autobiographical novels, legendary Australian criminal Chopper Reed was one of the baddest guys from Down Under. You all right? Oh, I'm sorry, mate. 
by studying the criminal up close and personal and undergoing an intense physical transformation, comedian Eric Bana is able to use his breakout performance to channel Chopper's instability and fierceness. Why little? Huh? Really, 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 settle down, you meaning we see some mean fits of rage interspersed with some sad disappointments. Now tell me this, right? Why would I shoot a bloke, bang, and then put him in the bloody car and whiz him off to the hospital at 100 miles an hour? Number three, Charlize Theron as Eileen Warnos, Monster. The truth is I'm a, I'm a hooker. And I'm trying to clean my life up here, you know, go straight and Christian and all. Sent to death row for seven murders, Warnos is as far as you get from the svelte Charlize Theron. Theron transformed physically with extra weight, makeup, and false teeth, but it's the psychological transformation that's most striking. People kill each other every day. And for what? For politics, for religion, and their heroes! No! No, there's a lot of shit I can't do anymore, but killing's not one of them. Theron's mastery over body language and even eye movements convey more about the character than words. And, underneath the veneer of a mentally disturbed, damaged woman, Theron plays Warnos with empathy and emotion. I'm a real, I mean, I'm a real hard worker. <laughs> Number two, Forrest Whitaker as Idi Amin, the last king of Scotland. They cannot kill me. It is in my dream. Winning the Oscar for his work, Whitaker truly became the feared and reviled Ugandan dictator. Charismatic and crazy, Amin possessed characteristics typical of a beloved leader. We are an independent African nation. But his jovial nature quickly transitioned into violent, paranoid behavior, and Whitaker perfectly presents these traits. The British newspapers say, I am a madman. I am a cannibal. Tracing Amin's descent into madness during his murderous and repressive reign over Uganda, the film and Whitaker himself remind us how scary the truth can be. Hold on to your guns! <laughs> Number one, Bruno Ganz as Adolf Hitler, Downfall. <laughs> Set in the bunker where Hitler died, this German film humanizes the Nazi leader in a way few thought possible or necessary. <sighs> Delusional and demanding as ever, the Fuhrer is brought back to life uncannily by Bruno Ganz. But instead of portraying him as unquestionably evil like so many before him, Gantz gives the character dimension mixed with his fanaticism, making for an unsettling film, but a stellar performance. I try, Heinrich. This is good. Can't say no. Do you agree with our list? Which portrayal of a real-life bad guy impressed you the most? For more top tens about your favorite films, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. And until then, I'll just be roaming. Thank <music> you.